Hey, how's it going? Uh, today we're talking about why abortion is a sin. And uh, <clears throat> of course, I'm not going to give you just my opinions. I'm going to read scriptural proof and uh, help you understand what the scripture is saying. And I will also give you my opinion as well, of course. But uh, <clears throat> let's start it off with Psalm 139, 13 through 18. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, or basically in our mother's wombs. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I wake, I am still with you. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I mean, how beautiful is that? I mean, that's like a poem God wrote for us, you know? And it's just basically telling you how much He cares for you. How meticulously He took His time to make us in our mother's wombs, you know? <clears throat> how much uh, attention to detail He put into creating us. And uh, from the very beginning to... Uh, us actually being born the whole process is all from God you know and uh, who are we to tamper with that who are we to basically say no I'm not having any part in that what God creates you know yes we are the ones who do the act but it's all about God used to creating because it says he's the one who formed us but anyway <clears throat> I'm going to break it down for you a little bit I want you to focus on these main points point verses okay verse 13 God formed our inward parts while we were in the womb okay God's doing the forming here verse 15 my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret or basically our framework you know when you think about framing a house it's the the, the beginning stages of it it's the bare bones so he's he's forming our framework, you know. He's from the very beginning when the sperm enters the egg, it's it's the whole the whole life process begins, not when we think it begins, but when God says it begins. <clears throat> Verse sixteen is the most important in my my, my opinion. Uh, you're, oh, hold on, maybe I didn't read verse 15. But anyway, uh, verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. Okay, I did read that, I'm sorry. <laughs> verse 16 is the most important in my eyes, though. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. I will now break this down for you. But first, let me just say this. He, we were unformed. You see that? Do you see the point of that? We were unformed. Okay, uh, let me read what else I wrote. Um, While God formed us in our mother's wombs, He knew us even before we were unformed. Meaning, before we had any human structure. Meaning, while we were still embryos, or the earliest forms... Not only that, but God fashioned our days for us. In other words, set up a plan for our lives before the days were even going to take place. Not only that, but he wrote them down in his book in heaven. So to summarize, people who think it's okay to abort a baby just because it doesn't look like a baby yet are sadly mistaken. Because the Bible clearly states God recognizes them as living beings before they even have form. So if you are a Christian, there is no justification for murdering your baby on the inside of you. And if you aren't a Christian, it still is murder. And I'm sure there's some sort of understanding of how that could be wrong on the inside of you. 
because God gives us all conscience. So no abortion, okay? Pro-life is the only choice. It's not about pro-choice or pro-life. Pro-life is the only choice. Anything other than that is just strictly murder, okay? No matter how you want to slice it. And the de that definitely was no pun intended. <clears throat> it's it's a it's an evil thing. It's terrible. Um. Before I became a true Christian, I was okay with abortion because I wasn't man enough to accept responsibility. So I didn't want any girl that I was with to want to have a baby because I, I didn't want one. I didn't want to have a baby. But now, if I was to have a baby, I'm going to man up and have the baby, you know? It's not about my choice. It isn't my choice. It isn't the mom's choice anymore. Once you have sex, you've already made up your choice. And that baby is, is forming inside of you, even though you can't see it yet, even though you might, the doctor might say, oh, well, it's not yet a baby. It's still just an embryo. Well, to God, that is life, okay? If you think about a scientist explanation, which I don't believe in evolution, okay? But if you believe in some scientist who believes in evolution, they even say that that's the early forms of life, okay? Whenever the, whenever there was this primordial soup or whatever, and there was all these little organisms bouncing around, they call that life, okay? Well, how much more of it is a life that something on the inside of you that you made, or you and your husband or wife put, uh, were in the act of making, of course it's God who forms, but y'all were the ones who initiated it. How can you say that that's not life? When it's in the, on the inside of you. And you're the one who uh, helped make it. Of course it's God who creates. But we're in that process as well. Okay. So how can you say that it's not yet life? Just because it doesn't look like a baby yet. I mean it just blows my mind that people want to try to justify that. You know. And you may say, oh, well, you know, there's a there's a reason why I'm getting an abortion. You know, I got raped and, you know, it's just a bad thing. It's a bad situation. Well, there's no justification for murder, you know. You can't just murder your baby just because you got raped. I mean, that's a terrible situation, and I'm sorry that that happened. Because we do live in a terrible world, but that baby didn't do anything to you. Don't murder your baby. God has already fashioned his days for him whenever you already have something growing on inside of you God writes it in his book and and fashions a plan for that baby's life and you're basically destroying the baby and and God's plan for that baby's life but anyway let me move on to some more scriptures so you don't think I'm just trying to twist something out of context or whatever Ecclesiastes 11:5 as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. <coughs> okay, we're just seeing the process, you know, God making the bones, God creating the baby, you know, God fashioning him. And uh, how are we going to interfere with that process? Once it, Once we make that choice to have sex that's where our choice ends okay truthfully once you decide to have sex that's when our choices end from then on if we choose yeah we still have free will and if you choose to murder your baby it is murder no matter how you want to look at it so no justification if you're gonna murder them call it what it is say I'm gonna murder my baby and I'm going to live with that murder for the rest of my life. I've seen testimony on YouTube and on TV of, of women who have done that and they regret it. There's so many of them who regret it and they wish that they didn't. Because that guilt sets in. They start realizing what they really did. See, in the beginning stages when they actually are leading up to getting the abortion and get the abortion, their emotions are playing tricks with them. Like, make justifying. Oh, it's okay. You know, I'm... You know, it's they're not really a baby yet and all this. They're trying to justify the sin, which is what we all do as humans. 
We try to justify our sin. <laughs> but they try to make excuses, and then once they've made that choice and they finally abort them, it's like instantly it comes upon them, wow, I made a terrible mistake. I shouldn't have done this. Now, I'm sure there might be some cold-hearted people out there who don't, don't have that remorse. But from what I've seen, every testimony I've seen, they all regret it. So if you're contemplating abortion right now, I beg you to to change your mind, even if you're not a Christian. I'm coming at you with a Christian perspective here, but even if you're not a Christian, think about it twice because you will regret it. Nine times out of ten, unless you don't have a heart. But anyway, um, Jeremiah 1, five. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Before I formed you in the womb. He knew you. He knows who is going to become a living person. So even before the procreation process comes into play, God knows that person. So once you stop that living process, once you stop that life that is on the inside of you, you are killing someone because how can God know someone who never was to be unless they were to be? You see, you're interfering with the process of life by killing them <clears throat> because that baby is still going to heaven, okay? Because God says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So God knows you before you even formed. Isaiah 49, 1 and, 5, 1 and 5. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has made mention of my name. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant. Okay, it's still talking about God forming in the womb. Just because we don't notice the form yet doesn't mean God isn't forming. Every little process in the step of life is God meticulously forming and fashioning us, putting us together. <clears throat> Job 10, 8-12 Your hands have made me and fashioned me an intricate unity, yet you would destroy me. Now, this is him, you know, this is Job talking. Remember, I pray that you have made me like clay, and will you turn me into dust again? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews or sinews you have granted me life and favor and you and you care and your care has preserved my spirit that just shows you all the little intricate details God is doing to form someone like clay you know like a clay like when somebody molds something with clay they're just messing with it until they make it and form what they're wanting to do. But God intricately puts us together on the inside of our mother's wombs, even from the very small stages that we classify as non-life. For some reason, they're not a living person then, which is sad because they are in God's eyes. Psalm 22, 9-10 but thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. <laughs> um, you know, there's just another one. All these scriptures together, you know, God puts us together. God forms us. God has fashioned us in our mother's wombs, you know. Who are we to get and interfere with that process? You know, I wonder if if they made a law that it was okay to kill your child all the way up until 17 before they turned into a legal adult, I wonder how many people would go along with that just because the majority vote. I mean, honestly, would you go along with that? Ask yourself, would I kill my son or daughter all the way up until 17? It's my legal right to kill them because up until then I'm responsible for their well-being. So if I decide, well, I don't want this human being to live any longer uh, before they become an adult, before it gets out of my hands, I might as well go ahead and kill them. 
How many people would go along with that? Honestly. Just because of the more majority rule. But just because the majority says it right is right doesn't make it right. You know, uh, in Nazi Germany, when Hitler was ruling, he got all the people to agree with him, or most of them. I'm sure there were some people that didn't, of course, because there was people who were hiding them and getting out of there. <laughs> but uh, he got the majority rule to say that it was okay to kill kill Jews because he made them think they were inferior. And it all goes back to evolution. It all goes back to evolution because he says that they were inferior, you know. So by process of elimination or uh, the dominant species, he wanted to eliminate them because he didn't think they were worthy to exist. Now how much more so are we believing in evolution when we say, okay, I can just kill my babies? I mean, if you think about it, it's sick. And that's why you should understand that evolution is sick. It is a terrible theory, <laughs> evolution theory, that people believe is fact. And I think I'm going to do another video on evolution. But anyway, uh, please, if you're thinking about abortion, just please don't do it. Because God is forming them. Once that seed enters the womb, God is forming them and has already written his book in heaven and fashioned their days. You know, but if you have if you have done this, if you've already gotten an abortion and you regret it and you're like, Man, I'm just the lowest of the low and God will never forgive me, God will forgive me. God loves you. You know, there's there's so many people out there who who don't realize what they're doing. They don't realize the importance of life. They don't realize the importance of their mistake. And, and you know, we all make mistakes. But God will forgive you. You know, don't live in the past. Don't live downtrodden for the rest of your life thinking you made the worst mistake in the world because we all make mistakes. And yes, it is a bad one. And I'm not trying to make light of it because it is a terrible mistake. But... If you've already made the mistake, you know, you got to make sure that you try to move on with your life because God still has a plan for your life. And God still wants you to focus on Him and focus on advancing the kingdom and spreading the gospel. So, there is forgiveness for people who abort their children. But I beg you right now that you please don't. Please don't abort. Because, like I said, God fashions you. God sets and orders your days. But anyway, God bless you, and I pray this video touches you and helps you understand the truth. In Jesus' holy name, amen.